What's going on all you gamers? Today we're back with some more Evil West. I'm going to be going over some perks and some upgrades that you should be looking out for in order to get a really good build going early to kind of mid game. So if that interests you, then stay tuned. That's coming up next. Welcome back everybody, today we'll be jumping into a bit of Evil West, I have been having a blast with this game, it's really enjoyable, if you like campaign experiences this may be one to watch out for. But there's a lot of perks and upgrades you can invest in, I'm going to show you a few that you should be looking into that can really help you out that kind of early to mid game. As always if this helps you out and you'd like to become a member of the channel then why not hit that subscribe and bell icon, I'll bring you all the latest and greatest gaming content. But for now, I'm going to show you a little bit of gameplay, what this build's about, and why you should be picking these perks. Right, hopefully from that you can see that this is a lot of fun to play, there's a lot of devastation going on and we're trying to get our abilities back as fast as possible. Being able to use those charge abilities is really powerful in this game. At this point of the game I was around about level 7, I would imagine you could probably get everything I've invested in by about 6 if you found all of the hidden treasures because I definitely didn't go out my way to find everything. Now first and foremost, one of the best upgrades you should be getting should be this one right here, Do Not Disturb. Healing is now followed up by a short 5 seconds in vulnerability. This is absolutely perfect. You can use it to go into battle, you can use it as an utto moment, you can use it to finish off your enemies or do some really big attacks. It's kind of safe in the knowledge that you're not going to get one shot or completely wiped out because you've got those 5 seconds going on. Obviously glowing red really helps things out, it shows you when it's popped, when it's not on anymore and it just helps you deal with situations a lot better and survive the onslaught of enemies. Jumping over from here and with our trusty revolver, this is what's going to get the kind of multi-target and clear for us. It doesn't do the most damage in the world, but it does hit a lot of enemies when you've upgraded it fully, and it's just absolutely great for taking on a lot of enemies at once from a mid distance if you don't want to be jumping into the combat fully close range. So mid air shot, an enemy can be shot right after becoming airborne with a single revolver bullet for increased damage. Effect can be repeated with the right timing as long as the enemy stays in mid air, does not work with the fan in action. Basically if you're tapping it you're going to be able to juggle them in the air and you can get kills from it very very often. Just down here one bullet shy, now we've got an additional bullet giving us 7 in our, I was about to say 6, giving us 7 in our 6 shooter now. And lastly Blaster, the main reason you're going to be using this for that early to mid game, the electricity augmented version of the Rentier revolver deals more damage and can make bullets ricochet between enemies. Like I said, you're going to be holding down that trigger button, you're going to be spraying and praying essentially, but you can be hitting a lot of enemies at once. This does really good multi-target, it's not the best single target damage, but when you see how much it's taking off all of their health at once, it's well worth using, and it's also a very safe weapon, giving you ample range and time to duck out of the way of things. For the gauntlet, you're going to want to upgrade the first and the second one, the first one performing the zapper pull or dash supercharges the gauntlet and greatly increases the next melee punch of damage. This means you get a nice chunky bit of damage for your next punch, 
often killing things if not you'll be able to go into a combo that then will kill things anyway and the one that you're definitely going to want this one is pretty much essential in this build is going to be the great finish performing the zapper finish produces his produces his produces a spike of electricity dropping an energy pickup to finish an enemy with zappa perform either dash or pull on a near death opponent basically when you see a near death when they're in that yellow state and you can go into your execution you're gonna instead pop into them with your zappa or pull them towards you whatever you want to do i usually jump straight into them because it's easier and then it's going to go into a finisher but the main thing is going to give us our energy back allowing us to refill our energy bar is the way forward with this build now like I said it's an early game build to mid game so we haven't specced into anything on the rifle and again we haven't specced into anything on the boomstick. Later on I would really advise to pick these two if you can as they're going to do a lot of damage. Especially this one that's going to give you pretty much double damage on big boss targets when they're lunging at you do that shotgun shot and you take off a big old chunk of health. But for the moment we won't spec into them unless you've got extra points. Now jumping over to the perks and you're going to be going along the top line. The first one is going to give you chain of command. Chain in the next melee combo attack right when the previous one connects deals 30% increased damage and makes the next punch faster. You're going to want to get this, you're going to want to go along as soon as I can speak probably, go along this top line and it means that you'll be doing a lot of melee damage and you'll be getting your ultimate back very very often because you'll be going into your melee and you'll be going into that electrocute state. Then from here we're going to use Icarus, killing the mid-air enemy has a 100% chance of dropping the energy pickup. Again, if you don't want to waste resources or if they're in your face you can do the uppercut, you can either go with your boomstick or you can go with your pistol like we saw and again use that tapping action in order to take them out and then you're going to get another piece of energy. Just then from here if you want to put this on, this one is not actually essential but I found it quite helpful. Quake Punch, hold LB and RB to jump forward and smash the ground with a damaging blast. Nearby enemies take higher damage and a knockdown. It's good for the knockdown effect, honestly though, it's not essential. If you don't want to spec into this, you don't have to at this point, because you probably only want this once you're going all the way to the end. Down from here, two essential ones I would say would be Pump Jack. Dealing damage with the gauntlet reduces the cooldown of the healing dispenser. As you saw, we're punching faster, we're punching harder. We may as well put this on as it's going to mean we're now able to heal more as well. And again, allowing for a bit more survivability on the spot. Hitting the enemy's weak spot has a 15% chance to drop a health pickup. Now we've got a lot of health going on, we've got a lot of energy going on, we're just a well rounded for survivability but we're also going to dish out a lot of damage because we got in the next tree. So on the first row, like I was saying, short circuit, killing an electrocuted enemy yields an energy pickup. As you can see, we're going to be trying to get into that supercharged, you can't get again unfortunately from supercharged because then you'll be able to continually do it, but being able to do this is just game changing. You're going to drag them towards you, you're going to finish them off with a boomstick or you're going to go in with your big old punches that's going to be doing the electrocute after you've gone in with your zapper. Or again if you want an NG you can punch them up in the air, finish them off that way. You've got a lot of ways to get your energy back which is going to go hand in hand with this one just down here, supercharged mode. On the Xbox tapping in your left trigger and your right trigger enters your supercharged mode. You only get 7 seconds so you have to make the most of it. But once you're in that, I call this your kind of I win button. You go into it, you dish out so much damage, you teleport between enemies as you saw in our video, and you're just able to knock things out very, very quick and have a lot of fun doing it. Also didn't show, but if you're using the kind of long range, like tapping in the left trigger and then using your right trigger for shooting long range, you shoot out a blast effect. So that's also a cool thing, although most times I'm taking the enemies on the ground. Ultimately, this build allows for a lot of survivability, a lot of fun, and gets you into that supercharged mode very, very easily. I found this quite fun. I was rejigging things quite often. I'm really glad this game allows you to change your build whenever you want, as I hate it when games don't. For me, this is probably the best early to mid game build. But yeah, let me know in the comments. I'm having an absolute blast with this. I'm going to be bringing out a lot more guides, tips, and letting you know what some of the most powerful skills and weapons are as I should be finishing this off tonight. As always, Full Things Gaming, Full Things Xbox. Take care. I'll see you on the next day.